hello and good afternoon and thank you so much for tuning in and for watching as influencers of times continues to go in search of fascinating abandoned and derelict places to uncover their fascinating stories and to bring you live broadcasts from these amazing places that are so very quickly diminishing from an ever-changing world thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful beautiful autumn saturday afternoon we're live from Sandwell's um, most notorious and oldest monks cry, which is where I am right now. So you'll have to bear with me if you can't see me very well, so hopefully you'll get to see me in a little bit. But we're currently standing, or I'm currently standing, in the very heart of this monks priory. Now, this priory is actually just a very short distance away from Sandwell's nature reserve. So Samwell is literally just outside West Bromwich, which is just a couple of miles away from Birmingham. And literally just about 10 or 15 minutes walk away from here, you've got Handsworth. And in fact, if you've been watching and if you've been watching me over the last couple of weeks, you'll know that only just about two weeks ago, I did a live broadcast from um, the last remaining uh, pillbox uh, bunkers from World War II just outside Handsworth. And in fact, this priory is literally just about a 10 minute walk away from those bunkers. Now you'll have to bear with me because I've got quite a lot of spectators. So if I seem uh, a bit distracted at times, it's because there's, a, there's quite a lot of people walking past and I seem to have drawn quite an, uh, an audience. So just bear with me. So I'm currently standing, as I mentioned, in the very heart of this monk's priory, just outside or alongside Samuel's Nature Reserve. Now, the very room, believe it or not, and, and we'll have a look around in a minute and I'll take you into all the different parts, there isn't a lot to see because this is ruins. Now, I wouldn't say that this monk's priory is abandoned or derelict, however, it still is a fascinating place and you'll have to excuse if, if there isn't really a lot to see because this re literally really is only ruins. There's only walls left, there's no roof, there's no actual rooms left there's just outlines of rooms but I will try and take you into each different part of the priory and I'll try and kind of explain what each different section is so there aren't really there's walls but they're not fully intact walls if you see what I mean so that this literally is just ruins however I thought this would be and make a fascinating broadcast the room I'm standing in right now is known as the chapter house this would have been where the monks would have actually come to um, to basically just gather and just chill. Now, just to give a little bit of history before I go into each individual part of the, of the priory itself, this priory was actually built in the 13th century. So that will give you an idea of how old this priory is. So it was built in the 13th century. It can comprise of about, in the first 100 years, there was probably about half a dozen to a dozen monks in the next 50 years, so fast forward another 50 to 100 years, that actually diminished down to only one, two or three months, uh, monks. And in the last years, up to its final kind of, if you like, not demolishment, but in the last couple of years, there was only actually one monk left here. So I'll give you an idea. So this has got to be one of the oldest places that I've ever broadcast from. So we're going right back to the 13th century, which is probably the year 1106, if I'm not mistaken. And, and maybe just a little bit more than that so you can get an idea of just how old this place is so apart from that we've got um manor the lord manor of west brom and he was actually uh, associated with this priory and in fact his grave is still here now I say his grave his coffin is still here now, obviously the body's not here and, and the lid's been taken off but the actual stone coffin where he was laid to rest I'll take you to in a minute. It's actually just over by the presbytery and also the, um, the crossing section of the main, what would have been the chapel of the priory. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. So there is a couple of artifacts, or a little, you know, one or two bits and pieces that are still here, which are still fascinating. So the room that I'm standing in now, as I mentioned, is the, rec say the recreation room. It was called the chapter house. So this would have been where the monks would have come to uh, relax, to eat, in fact, there would have been a fireplace just by where I'm standing. And it would have been where the monks would have uh, warmed themselves up, like so they could have eaten, they would have discussed the business of the day, um, and they would have just basically just chilled out in here. So there would, have, there would have been seats of some kind, there would have been a table in here, so there just would have been... Thank 
excuse me. But you can probably just see, if I just take it over to here, you can see what's left. That's the last remaining window of this chapel, or this pri not chapel, but priory. However, there was a chapel as part of this priory, and we'll go into that in a minute. But this is the last remaining window of what's left of the window of this priory. And it's amazing to think that that was built around 1106, 30. these were built. It's just absolutely amazing. Now this prime was actually excavated between 1983 and 1988. And the reason for that being was because the, the prime was built out of not only as you can see like stone and this is all original stone this is nothing nothing's been replaced everything is exactly as it would have been or was when it was laid back in the 13th century. So these are all original walls still here. Not only was it built out of brick, or should I say brick, but stone, it was also made with things like wood. So a lot of things decomposed. As time, obviously as time went on and weather conditions and everything else, all the things like wood and all the materials that would have gradually just, de not demolished, but just fallen apart, was obviously, it, it basically just collapsed. Um, and, and so what happened is they had to come and excavate the site take away all the things that were kind of just beyond recovery so to speak and they did actually find a number of artifacts they found some leather they did find uh, some boots and other artifacts which are actually on display in a museum not far away from here so the only thing that they could really obviously leave was the stonework and walls that were left behind so everything else over time had fallen in collapsed um, and, and basically there was just it was just, a, I guess, just a, a heap of, I wouldn't say rubble, but just, just a heap. And so they had to come and excavate the site. So this is really what's just left, and it really is just, like I said, ruins. So you, you've got, like I said, the window here. And if I just pan the camera and you can see it's quite a long wall. This is probably the longest wall. And you can see I'm standing in it. They've put gravel down to make it, obviously, easier to walk on and things. So you can get an idea. It's quite a big, quite a big room. Now, believe it or not, on that bank would have been the original graveyard. So all the staff that worked at this priory would have been buried in that grass bank near there. There aren't any tombstones, there aren't any... There's no signs of any graves or anything like that. However, records suggest it, it doesn't clarify whether the bodies are still underneath that grass bank or not. It doesn't say. I think there's probably a reason for that. You can imagine if they did clarify that there was something under there you'd have people digging and doing all sorts of things so it's quite possible that people are actually lying to rest underneath that grass bank now there was actually a small house there there was a small it looked like a small farmhouse which was slightly separate from the priory even though it was up there it was only a small place and it was almost like a chapel of rest but there were gravestones dotted on that grass bank I don't know how many a dozen or more but it would have been the staff and the monks and the people who worked and lived here. Now, people actually lived in this priory. Not only did people work here, like staff, but the monks lived here, obviously, because it's the priory thing. So we'll go into the section where they would have slept and things. There's nothing really to see, but I'll take you there anyway. So that grass bank would have been where they would have been laid to rest, which is quite fascinating, really. Now, I've had a look up there. I've walked about and things, and I said there's nothing apart from just a grass bank. However, it's amazing to think that there's a possibility that somewhere in there and I can't imagine why they would remove them bodies. They might have done, however, you never know. But it's amazing to think that possibly there could be monks and staff from all those years ago, right now, laid to rest underneath that grass bank just there. And it's literally just a piece of, I say embankment, it's not really a bank, it's just a piece of ground, but that was used to lay them to rest. So it's fascinating to think that there could be people there right now line to rest unawares to other people who walk along it and over it and everything else so if I just pan the camera around thank you by the way for all the people that are watching I really appreciate your company so you can get an idea so you can see the ruins as I pan the camera around and like I said we'll go for a look in a minute all over the ground so that's what this room would have been like so what we'll do is we'll go next door and we'll just have a look 
So believe it or not, this would have been, oh, getting snagged. This would have been what was known as the cloister. Now the cloister was the main corridor. It would have been the main, if you like, the main central corridor of the entire priory. So as people came in, this corridor would have been bustling with staff and monks and there would have been doors which have gone off into separate rooms and different rooms and apartments, that kind of thing. So this is what's known as the cloister. You can see it's quite long. You can see the wall it goes that way, if I get my hand right, up there. So I'm standing in the main corridor. So that's, a, that's where we were just a minute ago, the chapter house. And you can see behind me is the rain. So you can kind of get an idea of where it would have been. So the original corridor would have run just up there. That is now actually kind of like a stream. It's like a, a stream. And the reason for that being, the reason why this is called Samwell Priory is because just south of this is fresh water. And so that would have been used for drinking. Oh, signal cut off then. So drinking and washing and that kind of thing. So there would have been fresh water now just up there. And I'm not going to take it. See where those metal railings are? Just up the top there. Just up there. Up there is a small... Um, it's like a kind of a, it's not quite square. If you can imagine three squares put together, so two at the bottom and one on top, so kind of like a pyramid shape. And then you've got this little kind of lion's head that comes out and there's like fresh water. Well, I don't know about fresh water now, but there's water coming out of its mouth into like a little pool, like a little well. Uh, and there's grills over the tops of the other two squares and there's water underneath. So I'm assuming that would have been used, or that obviously would have been part of this priory. That's where, like I said, it's quite soft ground just then. So that's where the water would have been. So what we'll do, we'll go up this way. I'm just trying to remember in my mind, actually, where everything is as well, because there's different names for different rooms. So we'll come back onto the grass bank. So up here, this would have been, believe it or not, where the monks would have been sleeping. So we're now actually standing where the monks would have been asleep. So this would have been their quarters. Now, all that's left, as you can see behind me, is an outline of where that would have been. You can see it, like a long square kind of uh, outline. So this would have been where they would have been sleeping, right here. So this is where the, the beds would have been and they would have slept here. And it's just amazing to think that I'm standing where monks all them years ago would have been sleeping. This would have been an active used priory and those monks would have been sleeping here. And it's just fascinating to think that. So that's this bit here. Like I said, there's not really a lot to show you, really. But you get an idea anyway. As we go further beyond, and what we'll do is we'll just keep walking. As we go further beyond, so what I'm going to do, just to kind of, a bit of a shortcut, I'm going to step over the wall line. This bit here, believe it or not, I've just walked through a wall. So you can imagine a wall being there. This huge section right here would have been the kitchen. So this enormous, you see it, big rectangle kind of room, that would have been, or this would have been, the kitchen. So this would have been where the meals would have been prepared, this would have been where all the kitchen utensils would have been stored. And I'm assuming, judging by, it's very difficult to kind of work out, it probably would have been the door. I don't know if you can see, just that little gap, just there. So that would have been a doorway, which would have come into this area. So this would have been a huge kitchen area. And like I said, this, is where, this is where the monks would have eaten, this is where staff would have pre pre uh, prepared meals, they would have cooked here. So you can imagine, I, I, I'm just trying to imagine what it would have been like. I mean, the 13th century, I don't know, I just, I can only imagine like a uh, wooden table, wooden chairs, like medieval kind of thing. And this is where, the, this is where they would have been, eaten, which is just crazy. So, that's where we're standing right now in the kitchen. So we've been in the, the main kind of recreation area where the monks would have been. We've been in their sleeping quarters, which is that room, and I'll just pan it round. So that square, rectangle, large shaped outline. So that would have been where they would have slept. And then you've got the kitchen area, which is just here, this big, this big bit here. And you can see, because it's so old, there's nothing here apart from just the outline of the rooms and grass. There's nothing else. However, let's go and have a look a bit more because it gets a little bit more interesting as we go along. So we're now going to walk, just trying to remember the different names. Okay, we've got another room. So I'm now walking in the corridor. So this would have been the corridor between the kitchen behind me, the monk's dormitory next to me, and this large room here. And I, 
That's what happens when you go live, and I try and remember all this information. There's a large square room just here. I can't quite remember what it was for. We'll have to come back to that. What I'll do, I think what we'll do, is we'll go up to the board, which actually tells you all the different parts of Priory. However, I'm aware that it's going to be back to front, so you might not be able to read it. But I can at least read it to you. It's got a large square room just there. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk down the bank, back into the cloister, which is the corridor. And there's a couple of other bits and pieces that I can remember. So we'll go this way. I've got lots of people watching me. It's quite embarrassing, really. Or wanting to know what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. Okay, so I'm just walking back through the doorway, which would have gone back into the recreation room. So we're now going to go back towards... I'm just trying to get my bearings. It's along here somewhere. Okay, I'll go this way. Okay, believe it or not, we are now standing in the sanctuary. <laughs> believe it or not, this tiny little square bit is the sanctuary. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move away and give you a pan a bit and let you see. Now the sanctuary, exactly where I'm standing, would have been where all the sacred vessels and investments would have been stored in this tiny, tiny little box. And there's also another little bit there, which is where it would have been. But all the sacred in investments and utensils would have been stored right here. And they would have been so sacred that nobody would have been able to touch them. Nobody would have been able to, obviously they would have been able to see them, but they would have been stored in here. And only the monks would have been able to touch them. I'm standing in it right now. I can't even begin to describe or imagine what those things would have been sacred there would have been vessels i guess so we could be talking things like vases or things for drinking from holy water um just trying to kind of think of all the sacred things that i can think of but that's all i can think of i think of like when i think of a chapel or a church or a cathedral and i think of sacred vessels that's what comes to mind you could probably think of some other things as well so like big drinking vessels and I don't know about jewels and stuff but just I don't know maybe things like crosses maybe there would have been clothing in here like sashes or garments of some kind I don't know I don't really know what monks would have worn sacredly I know obviously me and you have an image of what a monk looks like and we think of a robe with a sash or like a like a um a kind of um what's the word I'm looking for like a kind of knotted belt across the waist I can't, I've never seen I didn't know monks wore sacred things but I could just be thinking along clothing, it could have like I said there may not have been clothing in here, it might have just been vessels and stuff but that's what would have been in this room here so if I just move the camera around you can get an idea of how tiny this little box is and I'm literally having to manoeuvre so if I just spin I'm going to try and show you how tiny that little thing, see that? That would have been it. That tiny, tiny little box just there. If I move it the way, you can get an idea. There. See it? Tiny little square thing. So that tiny little square thing would have been the sacred kind of room where things would have been stored. Now then, I'm just trying to get my bearings and remember what this bit was. Can't remember. Again, I'm going to have to go and look at the board. I'm really sorry about this, guys. And I'm sorry, by the way, if this isn't really that interesting because there really is not a lot to see. So I'm kind of, you're, I guess you're kind of relying on me to tell you and I'm trying to remember everything. But we're going to have a look at the boards in a minute and you can have a look or I can read it to you. And we can have a look. But that's the sacred room anyway. So now it gets a little bit more interesting. Bearing in mind, this priory is one of very few that would have had semicircular shaped chapels. And there was a number of chapels at this priory, a number of them. And what I will do, once I've done this broadcast, I've taken lots of photographs today of the ruins. And what I will do, I will include a photograph of how the priory would have looked back in the 11th, uh, back in the 13th century. And I'll put it on my Facebook page and I'll put it on my, on my, um, my website. And what I will do, I will put all the information about this priory on the website so if I've forgotten anything you can go and have a look so if you go to www I know they say this every time but go to www.camdronephotography.co.uk look under uh, you'll see a heading uh, portfolio and then if you click on there uh, you'll, it'll 
open up some more things and there will be influences of the times and there'll be every single location that I've been to including today's and I'll put all the information all the photographs on there um, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to if, if you're interested you'll be able to read about the Priory and I'll include a, a picture of how it would have looked in the 13th century and you, it's it's amazing to see so believe it or not we are now standing in the north it's crazy in the north chapels there's nothing here apart from two uh, if I just show you can you see like two semicircular see that two semicircular walls so that would have these would have been the south chapels and there's two lots there's two here and two the other side so the north side the south side this is the north side yes the north side just get my bearings north side so these would have been two north chapels and these would have been for people to come and pray to the dead and also pray for the people that are lying to rest just over there underneath that grass on that bank and if I spin the camera around, you can see what I'm talking about that's that's the bank there so that would have been where staff and monks would have been buried so people you, you would come into these two chapels they're very small but they were semicircular shaped and they would have come in here and they would have prayed and said prayers um, and that kind of thing and kind of reminisced and it was very quiet in here um, and in fact I think these two chapels along with the, uh, the, the two, these two northern chapels and the two south ones the monks wouldn't have, wouldn't have come in these would have been specifically for staff and members of the public if I'm not mistaken they would have been specifically for them okay there's nothing else really to show you I'm afraid I'm really sorry but that's all there is that's all that's left However, it is amazing to walk in a priory so old and to think that I'm walking where monks, actual monks, I don't think I've ever been anywhere. I can't think of anywhere. I've, I mean, when you go to like castles and different places and there's like stories of monks or the monks were there, but this was an actual priory where monks lived 24 seven. Slept here, ate here, everything. So I'm walking where monks would have been every day for over a hundred years and it's just unbelievable if I just spin I don't mean me spin because I'll make it dizzy over there that's where we were just a minute ago so you remember we had kitchens up there and then over in the far corner that's where the monks would have slept that's their bedroom where my finger is right at the top and then if we come around a bit more that's the square room that I couldn't really remember what it was for and behind that, just up there, there, is the kitchen where they would have cooked and things. So let's leave this bit now. We're going to go into, this is probably the, actually the best part of the, the priory is where we're going to be now. I'm actually amazed how quiet it is earlier. Oh, I've still got a couple of people around. There's lots of people watching me. It's gone a bit quieter now. Okay. This would have been... Bear with me. Okay. Believe it or not, where I'm standing right now would have been the chapel. Now, people who wanted to come to the Priory were able to come into this part of the Priory and they weren't allowed to go any further. So they weren't allowed to go beyond where we're going to go in a minute. There would have been a screen which, was, which would have separated all the monks better all the monks from everyone else now people were allowed to come into this section every single day they were allowed to come in here and they were allowed to hear the choir and the songs being sung and that's the whole purpose of this room this chapel this part of the priory and they weren't allowed to go they weren't allowed to go beyond the curtain the monks weren't allowed to go beyond the curtain into here there was no interaction they were separate because obviously the monks were I wouldn't say sacred but because they were separate and because they touched sacred investments and vessels they were separate so they weren't allowed to come in here and vice versa we weren't allowed to go any further this is as far as you could get but you could come here every day and hear the choir you could hear the, you could hear hymns songs and you were allowed to pray and you were allowed to spend time in here as long as you liked now over here we've got what's left of the two stone pillars that would have been where we were the chapel so if I just spin the camera around and let you look that's all that's left 
of one of the pillars. That's all that's left. And if I spin the camera around, you've got there. So you've got those two, what's left of stone pillars that are left. You can probably see this on the floor. Believe it or not, that is what's left of a stone coffin. And on that coffin was a board and there was an inscription on there and it said nine it said nine something we'll have a look at the board because i can't remember again sometimes I, I try and remember all this stuff it was actually a, a very popular medieval game that was played and on this coffin this very coffin or grave on the lid was a board with that inscription it said no i think it was nine morrises or nine morris I think it was something like that, that's what it was called, and it was a game, a medieval game, that was popular and was played in this priory by the monks. And that's where it was. However, all that's left is now an empty coffin. So that's what was here. So let's go into the, the best bit. So I'm, well, I can say best bit, the most interesting bit. Okay, so we're now going to walk through. Now this, believe it or not, that's it. I'm now in what's called the crossing. This would have been where a, ta a chapel, this would have been the chapel entrance almost, and above me would have been a tower. So this would have been the chapel tower. So you can imagine, not necessarily with a clock or anything, it didn't have a clock, it was just a tower. But this would have been the very centre point at which you could either go right into that bit, which is the monk's bit, or left into the chapel where you could hear the choir, hear singing, spend time, pray, and that kind of thing. So there's no point in me showing you up because there's nothing there apart from the sky, but I'm standing right where you would have had to go on left or right, or you could have gone straight ahead, depending if you worked here or whatever the case may be. Is that people behind me? Oh, there's a couple of people there, let's go this way. So this would have been the chapely bit, and there would have been, like I said, a, a, a chapel and a roof and a tower above me mad. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the next bit. I'm, I'm kind of rattling through this quite quickly because there's not really much else I can tell you and there's certainly not much I can show you. So here would have been a doorway. Uh, if I pan it that way, I'm trying to make sure the camera doesn't flop like it did the other night. So you've got a doorway which would have been from outside and it would have come through into this bit here which would have been almost at the entrance and believe it or not there is only a few steps left original steps left so if i take it to this bit here this believe it or not is the actual entrance to this priory so you've got a step just there that's it so you've got one step left and that's all that remains of the original entrance into this priory so that's how you would have come in but that's how you would have entered and exited this priory. Just that one, one step. I'm conscious it's saying that the, the connection's weak, but I'm hoping it's going to stay with me. So if we move over to this section, this bit here, and if I spin the camera just down a bit, if I just show you there, you see that? Those are the last remaining steps that would have gone up into that tower. Now you remember what I said to you, there was a tower above the main section of this priory. That's the last remaining steps that would have been used by the monks. So that normal members of the public weren't allowed to use the steps. Only the monks were allowed to go up there. And that's all that's left. So you've got two or three, and that's it. And basically that would have spiralled up, that would have gone up spiralled up and it would have taken you up into the tower and into the into the kind of roofy bit of the tower but that's all that's left that's it so if i spin if i come back around this way and i just show you we've also got what's left of another grave now it doesn't say whose that is or anything else however we've got another grave tomb just there and that's all there's left. There's nothing left. And it's just fascinating to think that there are just some things here which are just... I don't know, I mean, it's fascinating enough anyway. But when you can see that there are things left behind like that, 
body, especially things like coffins or tombs where people would have actually been laid to rest. So now we've covered the majority or most of this priory. So what we're going to do, we're just going to carry on and go into this next bit. So there's not much left to show you now. We're pretty much coming towards the end. And hopefully I'm not going to end up getting myself stuck into the thing. So we're now in the northern part of the chapel. Do you remember I said that there were, um, sorry, the south part of the chapel. So you remember I said there were two semicircular um, chapels that were north, we're now south. So these are the two last remaining semicircular south chapels, which are nearest to the fresh water. So if I just pan the camera around, if I just show you, you can see what's left. You can see what I mean about semicircular. So one would have been just there, and the other one would have been here. Just there, look. See it? So they're like two semicircular shapes. And then as we looked just a minute ago, you've got the steps which are just there, which would have been the steps that would have been used by the monks only to go up into the roof. And the entrance, which is that tiny little opening, which has only got one step left. So these are the two south chapels that are left. And again, these would have been used by people. So if these two were full, I mean, they're not very big, so they wouldn't have fitted very many people. So if these were full, then people would have gone to the northern chapels. So you had kind of four in a way, four. So the two south ones are together, as you can see, and the two north ones are together. So people would have come into these two separate chapels. And even though there were people here, I can imagine it must have been really, when you go into a chapel, it's always very quiet, very still. You can, people go there to reflect, people go to pray, that kind of thing. But can you imagine being I'm just trying to create an atmosphere for you. It's all very well me describing these things, but I'm just trying to give you a bit of an atmosphere as to what it would have been like. So can you imagine the walls still being here? If it had been cold, would it have been cold? Would it have been drafty? Would, it, would there have been windows in these chapels? Would it have been quiet? And if so, how quiet? Could you have heard anything? I would imagine you probably would have heard the choir. And how, I mean, I personally quite like, there's nothing like choir singing I mean I've heard a choir sing in a cathedral it's quite impressive you know it not only does the sound echo but they're all in tune there's something very I suppose the word I'm going to use and forgive me for those of you who maybe don't believe in anything but very heavenly there's a very heavenly sound to a choir something very uplifting spiritual so I'm wondering if people would come in here and pray and it would be very still and quiet, and people would be to hear the choir. And what that choir would have sounded like all those years ago, 13th century. Nothing like today, we've got an organ and, you know, the choir might have only been six people, eight people, maybe less, we don't know. But what that would have sounded like. How it would have felt and, you know. I mean, I'm quite chilly sort of standing here, even though it's fairly warm, but, yeah, what it would have been like. Anyway, just to kind of give you an idea. So we're going to go into the last two remaining parts of these ruins and then we're going to finish because there's really not much, there's certainly nothing else I can show you. We'll go and have a look at the board and we'll probably go to the one at the other end because it's a bit clearer because the one at that end is a bit manky. So I'll take you to the other one and I'll kind of read or just clarify some things and then we'll finish. Um, so let's go and have a look because people that were here have moved away so I can show you kind of the last remaining bits. So we'll walk through, walk through this bit. See now I don't know if you can tell but even that kind of, see it's got water in it but that's because that fresh water runs just behind, it's literally just over there and it runs down underground and it's kind of filled up with water and it's quite a bit, a bit soggy here. Now, when I was looking around here earlier and I was looking at the stones and stuff, I was actually looking to see, because it's quite fascinating, if you can find inscriptions or if you can find any indication of markings on the walls. Now, some people would probably not even notice, but I tend to look at the bricks and I always look to see if I can find an inscription or markings that look like they've been here for a long time. Now, you get kids and people scratching names and stuff, but there is actually one brick over there that's got an inscription on it. 
doesn't say anything it's just got markings on however it's fascinating to think I mean it, you can tell it's an old inscription or an old marking so even if that wasn't done by the monks even if that was done several I don't know, 200 years ago or even a hundred years ago who did it you know who did it it's just fascinating to think but we'll have a look at it in a minute so take it around this way so believe it or not we're now in what was known as the i think it was called the chapel no the chancel see i'm trying to remember the stuff the chancel this is the chancel this would have been where the monks would have been so they had two specific areas of sacrism this would have been the chancel one of two of the most fascinating part of the priory now the reason why this is quite fascinating is because I'm standing just feet in fact less than a foot away at my feet is what's left of the gravestone of where the Lord Manor of West Bromwich was laid to rest back in the 15th century and even though his body's not here his grave or his tomb is still here there's no lid on it so you can see the shape of it and it's actually really small it's been filled with gravel but it's actually about my height maybe even a little bit shorter and it's really narrow so I don't know how they managed to fit somebody in there but it's 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 got a head shape and we'll have a look at that now so this part the chancel was where the monks would have come prior to going into the presbytery which is where we're going to go in a minute which is the most sacred part of this whole priory so this is where the monks would have come they would have had the sacred vessels investments uh, they would have got prepared, they would have got ready to go into presbytery, uh, presbytery. and this is where they, they would have accumulated. This is also where the choir would have been. So the choir would have been in this area. Now it's not a very big area, but they would have been in this area. So they would have been singing, harmonising, uh, there would have been a very heavenly spiritual kind of atmosphere. So the curtain would have been just behind us. So you remember I said you've got the crossing and then the curtain and then the chapel the other side there, which is where the people would have been. So this would have been completely screened off. So nobody could have seen this, nobody could have come in here apart from the monks. They were the only people allowed in this bit. So it's quite, sorry, my hand's shaking because I'm holding the, I'm a bit cold, but I'm also trying to hold the tripod. So if I'm a bit wobbly, that's why. So this would have been the, the, cha uh, the, the chancel. And this is where the monks would have come in. It's amazing to think I'm standing Sometimes when you come to places like this and it's just ruins, you really do have to think, you have to kind of imagine. Because there's nothing here to say anything. You know, there's nothing here to make you necessarily feel anything, so you kind of have to compensate. And you really have to try and use your imagination. But this is where they would have been. So I'm standing where monks would have been just prior to going into the presbytery. Now the, the room, the presbytery and the chancel wouldn't have been necessarily screened off it may have, there's nothing there's nothing here to say it was separated but this was slightly separate so I'm almost in the most sacred part of the, of the priory from the 13th century it's just I can't even get my head around it I can't even I said I'm trying to imagine monks I'm standing on the ground or in this in this very space where monks would have been original monks a dozen monks, eight monks, six months, doesn't matter. They would have been here getting ready. What the conversation would have been like? How did they look? Who were they? What were their names? Were they wearing just robes or were they wearing sacred things? We don't know. It doesn't say. However, it's still fascinating. So what we're going to do, well, let's have a look. So this is the grave, believe it or not. If I come down onto the, f mm, if I come down to the floor a little bit. Oh, no, maybe not. It's perhaps not a good idea. Can you see? what's left there you go you can see it see that that's what's left of the lord manor of west bromwich's grave so he would have laid right there in that very space it's quite short so it's a bit shorter than me it's quite narrow it's not very wide it's probably about a foot wide but you can see his head shape and he would have laid right there and he wasn't just laid there for a couple of days, he laid there for a long time. In fact, he laid there in the 15th century. So two centuries later, 
he was laid there in that very space. I'm not going to stand in it because that's disrespectful, but he would have lied right there. And to think that I'm standing and I earlier on I just put my hands on the gravel in that space. I didn't stand in it or anything because I just think that's disrespectful. However, I put my hand in there and to think that my hand was in the space where the Lord Manor of West Bromwich laid in the 15th century. Now his name was Richard de Marnham. That was his name, Richard de Marnham, in the, in the 15th century. When he died, he was laid to rest here and laid in that very tomb. In the, in, in the second most sacred place of this priory. It's just, it might not seem much, it might not look much, but it is fascinating. The Lord Manor, I mean, I don't know, I haven't had time to Google who he was or his role or anything, but the Lord Manor of West Bromwich. So to me, the Lord Manor is somebody who's in charge of a property or maybe this priory. He could well have been the manor, the, the, the person, the authoritative person over this priory from the 15th century onwards, not before, but after. Now when this, this priory was built in the 13th century, it was built by the son, uh, his name was William, he was the son of another person. Now, I can't remember off the top of my mind what his name was, we'll have to have a look at the board in a minute. But it was William who actually built this priory, or helped build this priory in the 13th century, and he was the son of somebody. And then, like I said, in the 15th century, Richard de, Richard de Marnham was laid to rest here, the Lord Manor of West Bromwich. Remember I said to you about the stone that we an engraving on? It's not much to look at. But if I just show you, if we can go, if I can go here, you see that. You probably can't see it because you've got a tiny little mark there. And all it is, it's a dom it looks like a domino. So you've got like a rectangle engravement with a line through the middle. So it looks like a domino. There's no dot spots or nothing on it. There's no name. However, that is the only stone in this whole priory that's got any kind of engraving. Now it's been engraved because it's been engraved into the stone rather than scratched. So whether it was done at the time or at a later time, who knows? We don't know what it means. But still fascinating to think that's the only stone in this entire priory with any kind of inscription on it. So but I can't you can't really can't really show you. Uh, I don't know if I'm just trying to show you. You can't really see. If I maybe if I come around this way, you might get an idea. I've got <laughs> I've got, I've got quite an audience, I've got quite a lot of people watching me. Anyway, let's carry on. Can you see it there? There we go. There. So that's basically it. But I thought it was quite fascinating really. Because it could have been there for a very long time. Okay, let's go into the last room and then we're going to finish. We're going to have a look at the board as well. So we're now standing in the presbytery, the most sacred part of the Priory. This part would have been where the high altar would have been, the sacred altar, and it would have been just by there. So the monks would have come in here, having got ready, having got prepared in uh, the chancel, which is where we were, which is where the, the great or the tombs lying. This would have been the presbytery, the most sacred place of the entire priory. And the only people who were allowed in here would have been the monks themselves. So they would have been prepared, ready, they would have come in here to the high altar and this is where they would have spent their time just them praying um, and, and the, like I said the choir would have been just next door and this is where they would have been and again it's not necessarily a large place it's semi-circular in shape it's not very large not very big but the high altar would have been here right where I'm standing this would have been the high altar now I know what a high altar looks like, or at least my concept of a high altar. Whenever I've gone into a cathedral or a chapel, the high altar is usually a rectangular shaped, almost like a table. It's usually made out of marble or something of that kind, and it usually has uh, candlesticks, which are usually gold. They usually have seven branches. You have holy water. You might have a Bible, an extremely large holy Bible, which is usually gold gilded. So. And you sometimes have like a sash or some kind of covering over that tape, over that altar, which is uh, gold laced or embroidered with silk. 
that's my concept or idea of a high altar but we don't know what it was like here we don't know what kind of art altar it was it could have been that shape it could have been something else it could have been a cross maybe not a cross but there would have been a cross on it so anyway this is the presbytery where they would have been the most sacred place so there you have it one of the oldest priory monk priories that i've ever been in like i said i'm, I'm hoping you found it interesting i'm sorry if the information was a bit vague my apologies if there wasn't really much to see or look at but i'm hoping and i can see lots of people watching thank you so 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 much for watching so hopefully you found this interesting hopefully i was able to interest you a little bit but i do appreciate that this might not have been as interesting as my other life broadcasts that i've done however i did once i found out that this prior is here influence of the times just had to come have a look do a bit of research and kind of bring you in here and have a look because not all of you obviously going to see this not all of you some of you live miles away from here some of you live very near some of you live an awful long way and this might not be somewhere where you would come and see it's a popular place don't get me wrong there are lots of people who walk through here uh, people walk around it and all sorts of it does there's a lot of people it's actively looked at and, and walked through every single day say it's vandalized but you get a lot of kids here with bikes and it's a hangout area however the story the real true story behind this priory is a fascinating one and like I said it's one of the oldest definitely one of the oldest places and even though it's not derelict or abandoned it's still ruins and it still holds a secret there's still a secret in here and it might not be a secret that we can see but it's the stories behind it's what everything stands for you know the tombs the names the dates the inscription on the wall you know the different rooms and yeah, i just find it fascinating and i'm hoping that bringing you in here was as fascinating for me as it was for you so thank you so much for tuning in for watching i really appreciate your company and um yeah i do hope you found it interesting so i think the next best thing we can do there's a lot of kids at the other end. Just, so what we're going to do, we'll have a look at the board just behind me. And we'll just go over some of the rooms. And if there's anything I've missed out, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out. But I've pretty much covered everywhere. So um, what we'll do is we'll go up this way. And uh, we'll have a look at the board and we'll just see. So we had, and you can see how this whole place is covered by trees and shrubbery and in fact you wouldn't think that there's a golf course just next to where this priory is in fact i'm just a few meters away from the fence to the golf course so there literally is a normal running world around this priory but it is a beautiful place to be absolutely beautiful you can see the trees and the, and the walkway and things behind me so we've got the golf course just there so that's samuel golf course so we'll do is just I'm just walking over to the board and then we're gonna finish. So I'm not gonna there's no point in me trying to show you because it'll be back to front. So we went into the new chapter house, which is where the monks would have chilled out, hanged out, ate, that kind of thing. Okay, the warming room, the warming room was literally just next to the chapter house. So that and the warming room, along it says here, along with the kitchen. There would have been a fireplace and it would have been a, place, a common room for the monks to kind of just relax and stuff in so it's kind of like two rooms together really so we did the cloister which was the corridor we did the kitchen the refectory would have been where the monks would have slept we did the nave so that's one of the parts that i couldn't remember so the nave is the western end of the church where people uh, where people could gather to hear the services and they were strictly separated from the monks. So the nave and the crossing are the two parts where other people wouldn't have been able to go any further than that. And then you have the chancel, which is where kind of like the middle bit and then we, and, and where the tomb lays. And then we have the presbytery, which is the sacred place. We did the south and the north chapels. So that's pretty much it. I think we covered everything. And we did the, the sacristy. So remember the sacristy was that tiny, tiny little square box where the sacred vessels and investments would have been and that my friends is it 
So there you go. Samuel Priory. So, without further ado, I'm going to finish there, because I'm aware that I've probably been live much longer than I actually thought I would be, actually, because I didn't think I'd remember half the stuff I did. So, all the photographs of today will be on there, along with the information. Uh, they'll be on my website, they'll be on my Facebook page as well. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch me, Influence of the Times, as we continue to go in search and as we continue, as I continue, to bring you into the very heart of Britain's most notorious, well-known and derelict and abandoned places. So join me next time as we bring you to another location. Now, I've got some fascinating places coming up over the next days, well, maybe not days, but weeks and months and into the new year. We shall be travelling all over. I will be taking you all over the United Kingdom. We've got lots of places in mind. I've got Yorkshire, I've got Sheffield, I've got Liverpool, I've got Manchester, I've got Wales, I've got right up into the north of the country so we're going to be heading right up into Yorkshire we've got castles and stuff up there I'm not going to give anything not too much away but we've got lots and lots of places in store and in mind for you guys and I shall be going in some places doing live broadcasts um, un unveiling all the hidden stories and facts and figures and everything else behind these places as well as taking photographs but also taking you in there most importantly taking you in there so that you can have a look so that you can join me and be at the very heart of these wonderful fascinating places which so very quickly being taken away from us now join me next month in a couple of weeks I'm gonna have a nice break so I'm gonna have a nice break a nice holiday but during that time I'm gonna be doing a very special edition I know I've mentioned this before so if this is old hat forgive me next month in probably about four weeks time I'm gonna be away from the Birmingham area during that time, I'm going to be doing two very special editions of Influence of the Times. We're going to be doing them back to back, so it will be one day we're going to be doing one location, the very next we're going to be somewhere else. I'm not going to tell you which days or when, however, during that time, I'm going to be visiting two places, both very notorious and well-known uh, locations. The first one, it will be Munston Chapel. Now, I went there probably about a year ago. Again, there's hardly anything left apart from some walls, that's pretty much it. However, it's in a fascinating location in the beautiful Hertfordshire countryside. So it's a couple of miles outside of Hitchin. And then the next day I will be going in the Bedfordshire countryside to bring you a live broadcast from Clop Hill Church, or better known as St Mary's Church. Again, another notorious well-known location. And I'll be going in there, taking you in there, taking pictures, broadcasting you to live from both places. So I'm hoping you will join me as I bring you the fascinating stories behind these amazing locations quite often hidden from our sight, hidden from our view. Um, uh, yeah, this one obviously isn't so much hidden. However, it is quite secluded because it's got trees and it's just, I don't know, it's got, even the golf course is there, but you can't hear that. But you've got the trees, the countryside, you've got the animals and different things around, squirrels and everything. So it's fascinating, it's a beautiful place. So yeah, hopefully you will join me very soon. I'm hoping, if I can, to do a broadcast before those two back-to-back -back special editions um, if I can I will I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to or if I am where it will be from I'm not quite sure I have got some places in mind but it will depend on whether or not the places are still existing and if it's even possible for me to do a live broadcast anyway so stay tuned keep watching and um, for those of you who have been watching me on a regular basis you, you're aware I did a, a very how can I say it? Interesting live broadcast the other night. I think it was Wednesday night. I did it live from Dudley's oldest railway tunnel at night time. I will be doing some more night time um, live broadcasts. I don't know where from because obviously I have to think about safety. I have to think about the location at night time. And not every location is fascinating and interesting like Dudley Tunnel, Netherton Tunnel, and Coesley Tunnel at night. But I will be doing some more nighttime live broadcasts, so bear, bear with me. Uh, stay tuned. Keep watching. Thank you so much for your patience and for your time. It's been a pleasure to have your company, and it's so humbling to be able to bring you into the very heart of these fascinating places. So without further ado, enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. Take care. Thank you for joining me in of the Times as we bring you into Britain's most derelict and abandoned places. Till the next time. <laughs>